Today, it's a battle at the $2,000 mark for an American-made, affordable, all-solid wood acoustic guitar with some vintage vibes. So I'm gonna compare this Martin 00017 to the Taylor 8012E SEB. Let's see who comes out on top. Stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee with Alamo Music in San Antonio, Texas, and you can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, you turn on notifications, like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our Spring Store link below for custom swag and check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. So this is a fun comparison. It's Taylor versus Martin, which you guys always seem to love. Um, and it's at the exact same price point for these particular models that are very similar in construction and just kind of, I think, the aesthetic that both companies are going for with this and the overall design of both these guitars and the series. So it's great to kind of pit them against one another. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about what they are. Now, if you look this one up, the Martin online, you're going to see that it can start at about $17.99. Now, that's as of right now. So uh, check our website, alamomusic.com, for the latest pricing. That's for the non-E model. This is the 00017E in black smoke finish. Uh, this is also available in a whiskey sunset finish, which is pretty cool and popular. But it seems people like the black smoke, so this dark kind of ebony satin finish with the white um, with it. And this version with the electronics comes in at $19.99, exactly. Um, same for the one on my other side. This is a Taylor ad 12 e -S -E -B. So that means it's an American Dream model, just like 17 is the series for this one. 80 implies American Dream series for the Taylor, uh, which is the entry level into their American-made guitars. It's a series that came out kind of during the pandemic um, and takes away all of the fluff and leaves just the essentials to make a great guitar. Um, this one also kind of has a vintage aesthetic and vibe going with it, uh, with the sunburst and the tiger stripe pit guard that they've added to this guitar. And these are both very similarly sized. This is a triple O, this is the Grand Concert. A triple O is also called a Grand Concert body uh, at Martin. And so these are effectively two vintage inspired uh, Grand Concert guitars coming in at the same price point from the two arguably biggest acoustic guitar manufacturers uh, American made guitars in the world. So um, very cool to kind of put these in their paces. Let's talk about what's different versus what's the same. And we'll start with the Taylor. So it's a grand concert. Obviously the lines are gonna be a little bit different and the measurements are going to be a little bit different compared to the Martin, but they're pretty similar. So it's a similar size, it's a similar depth. Um, this features a spruce top with Taylor's V-Class bracing. So it's gonna be different than the X bracing that's on the Martin guitar, obviously. It's Taylor's way of trying to balance sustain and volume um, so you can kind of deal with those independent from one another with the bracing pattern. We've talked a lot about V-Class bracing. If you need more, find those videos on our channel where we've kind of dissected it. Um, I really like what they've done with the changes here. So the changes are, uh, with a spruce top, they've paired walnut uh, back and sides to it. And I think the walnut's really nice. Every piece is different. It's all solid wood, of course. And so sometimes you'll see some with some flame on it, different coloration. And the top is really nice. The burst, along with the tiger stripe, reminds me of, you know, 30s and 40s Gibsons, um, like an old LG1 or LGO. Very very cool aesthetic. And it has no binding on the guitar. What they've done is a reveal binding. So that's where basically the finish comes to a point and then what you're seeing is really the edge of the spruce and it's been rounded or chamfered so that it's very comfortable, which is I really like. It features a bridge and a fingerboard of smoked eucalyptus. This is something Taylor started doing on this particular series. Uh, it, it works really great. Um, from what we've been told, it's easy to work with as far as fretting. It holds frets, which is very important. Holds frets very well. Um, it's got a different look to it, kind of like rosewood on a lot of vintage guitars. Um, 
But yeah, it feels great. It, it looks good for the guitar. I don't have any qualms about it. Of course, they've kept Ebony on a lot of their other guitars uh, from both their Tecate stuff made in Mexico um, in like 100 series and so forth, and also the U.S. guitars. So I think this really is just part of what they're doing with this series and the whole overall aesthetic. Just like the body, the neck's not bound. So you can see the edge of the frets coming right up to the edge, uh, to the sides, the tangs that sit underneath the fretboard, uh, just like you can on a lot of PRS guitars. And it's a look that I'm okay with, particularly because in this particular case, when you look down the neck, the fretwork is just, in, it's perfect. It's impeccable. So I like that. Um, the rest of the aesthetic is carried over with the satin finished headstock the Taylor logo inlaid in Italian acrylic, and the black tuners and black uh, hardware that goes with it, like the strap button here. Um, so the neck has a one and three quarter inch nut width and a 24 point, I think, 75 inch scale length um, on this, which makes it just a little bit off from the Martin, which is 24.9 or 24.8, something like that. So they're both shorter scale than you would typically see on like a Dreadnought, Grand Auditorium from Taylor. Uh, these Grand Concerts are shorter scale, a little slinkier feel to them. Um, but overall, it's a really nice, lovely looking, you know, a vintage aesthetic guitar. Again, US made, it's all solid wood. It comes with a gig bag. And that's something we're going to kind of compare in uh, toward the end of the video, since this is really kind of dollar spent. What's the best value? What's the best sounding playing guitar? Let's take a look at the Martin. Now, one thing that immediately hits me with this Martin, uh, along with the contrast of just the black and the white with this kind of cool binding, is the strings. And that's going to lead to some of the difference in sound. This is using Martin's retro strings, which are made of Monel. Um, it's really what guitar strings were made of prior to World War II. As far as I'm told, I wasn't around, um, but nickel needed for the war effort. They used that and phosphor bronze became the norm and we've used it, but it gives you a very decidedly different sound when you're using this. And I don't like it on a lot of guitars. I, I don't like it on rosewood guitars, but I really like it on mahogany and similar tone wood type guitars because it's already kind of a fundamental dry tone wood. I think these strings, which really emphasize the fundamental go along with it very, very well. So construction wise, it's very similar. Um, you've got a solid Sitka spruce, uh, spruce top with your X bracing in there instead of the V-class, because obviously it's not a tailor. Um, the back and sides on this are listed as mahogany. And you've got a pickup in here if you go with the E option. Uh, in this particular guitar, it's a Fishman. Now, if you look up the specifications on Martin's website, it'll actually give you a range of pickups. I've been noticing that recently on a lot of their guitars, which is interesting to me because when we've ordered this, it's only ever can come with the Fishman pickup, which is a Fishman, I believe it's the Matrix with an Enhance uh, option. So you've got controls right here in the sound hole, which I really like. I don't like barn door type preamps in the side of the guitar typically. So it's nice to have them either here or up on the bout like Taylor has. Yeah, as minimalistic as you can get it is kind of what I prefer. So you've got the Fisherman pickup system in here. Uh, battery is accessible down on the bottom on both of these guitars. And then you've got, um, as I mentioned, this kind of shorter scale length because it's a triple low. Rosewood bridge and fingerboard, very similar to the eucalyptus kind of in appearance and feel. Um, and really you shouldn't be feeling the wood on the fretboard much when you're playing. If you are, you're probably pressing too hard. Um, very simple logo up here at the top. It's just the Martin script in gold. And then they have these nice tuners. So these are smoked uh, open back uh, gear tuners with like these Ivroid buttons, which I think with the whole kind of tuxedo look of this guitar, it's a great aesthetic. Um, one thing I will say about this guitar a little bit, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about it on the other side, is both of these guitars are satin finished. The pore filler that Taylor is using, or the way that they're doing the satin finish, feels a little different. This is very much more open pour. And that's, I guess, for better or worse. The guitar is very light, which I like. It's very resonant. And I'm sure all of that really um, helps it. But it also has a bit of a rougher feel, particularly on the kind of back corner, to the point that when I first took it out of the bag, um, 
the bag shed on it a little bit. I think in part because there's some roughness to the finish. And as I wiped it down, you could kind of feel the texture under the rag, you know, if that makes sense. So in comparison, the Taylor is definitely smoother in that regard. Which sounds smoother uh, acoustically, of course. Well, to compare these, I'm playing the same thing, and we've both mic'd these guitars, but we've also plugged them in direct so you could get an idea of what the Taylor ES2 sounds like with that guitar versus the Fishman, because again, this is all about, hey, these are the same amount of money, they have very, very similar aesthetics and feel, which one should you be buying? So take a listen for yourself.
Okay, so there's the comparison playing uh, and both the acoustic sound of the guitars and the plugged in sound of the guitars. Now I wanna give you just some kind of behind the scenes stuff um, as far as how we went about recording these. When we went to record the Taylor with the ES2, we basically just left everything at the center detent. So if you've never played with one of these guitars, the way it's set up is this is volume, this is treble, this is bass. It's an active preamp, active EQ. If you wanna say bump the mids, uh, you could turn both down. Mids are at a fixed point, now you've bumped the mids. If you wanna scoop the mids, you could turn both up, you've scooped the mids. We've effectively left the onboard EQ for the guitar flat. The volume also has a center detent, and I usually recommend people putting it there, and then if you need to turn up, say you're in a group and you need to play a, a acoustic lick solo or something, you can turn it up to whatever extent's needed. But that's all we did on this guitar. Plugged it in, Bob's your uncle. So that's what you're hearing. And that's going directly into our system through an Apogee uh, ensemble and so forth. So with the Fishman on here, there was some back and forth trying to get a good sound out of our system for this. Um, I've always kind of been perplexed on these. It's a little bit backward from where a lot of other pickups are. So the tone is the one closest to the neck. The volume is the next one. And then there's an enhance on the bottom. There's no center detent. And we, there's a lot, the pickup was pretty hot, according to Josh. He's like, that's a very, very loud guitar. And so we, we kind of turned down to about a halfway point, so to speak. And there seemed to be a less linear volume curve uh, on the Martin. What Josh was saying is there's, there was a point where you would hear a lot more volume, but also like the noise floor would raise. Um, so just, you know, take that for what it is. You might need to dial one of these in a little bit more based upon the equipment that you have. Um, so, and again, you might be able to order this with other pickup options like the Anthem, um, which could be an interesting option. Although I don't, again, it's on the website. I don't usually see it on the order sheet. Let's talk about some other things. So I mentioned the bag kind of shedding on the Martin. Let's look at the bags just so that you get a fair comparison. So this is the gig bag that has been shipping with the 17 series. Now, if you have an older 17 series at some point, I think they came with a case just like the 15 series did. Uh, but no mas, keeping the price low, they've switched to a gig bag. And it's a pretty sturdy gig bag. It's not one that you can really like fold in half. It's pretty substantial. Inside you've got some nice uh, neck support that is detachable. Um, and you've got about an inch and a half thick padding um, on it with this kind of blue material. This is what had shed onto the guitar. Uh, and by the way, that happens with cases too. It's pretty common, we'll pull a brand new Gibson or Martin or Taylor or something out of the case, brand new Fender Tele or whatever, and so, some of this lining has just kind of shed off on the guitar. So that's not a big deal, it's normal. Um, so you've got that, backpack style straps, and you've got a very large pocket here. It's about the size of like a, uh, a book that you could put in there. So let's see what, some pockets. It's pretty cool. I mean, as far as gig bags go, there's a lot of accessory things you can put in there. They have come a long way with some nice Martin embroidery. So that's your Martin case or gig bag rather. The Taylor one, we got to talk about as kind of being a bit superior. Taylor's got two different styles of gig bags. They've got the one that you would see come on like a GS Mini or 100 series, and you've seen them probably. They're the, kind of these tan khaki gig bags. They're very similar to the Martin bag we just looked at. They're robust, uh, they're flexible, but they've got really thick padding, large pockets. They're good bags. Taylor came out with these aero bags or aero cases um, about the time they came out with the American Dream. I think, I think it was a coincide. And these are on American Dream guitars. They've been on some higher end uh, tailors like the 811. And uh, the, uh, I think the newer higher end GS Minis uh, like the, um, oh, I'm trying, I'm totally blanking on the name of it. The higher end uh, Rosewood, the pluses. The, the, those come with these as well, just in GS Mini size. So it's, it's kind of a cross between a bag and a case. So you've got your lining with thick padding. It's a, it's a 
more robust material. In other words, it's not as squishy as what you'd find on the Martin bag or on Taylor's tan bag. Um, so it's very nice. It's got substantial neck support that's not removable. It's really kind of more like a case than like a gig bag, even though it closes with a zipper enclosure. But it's pretty heavy. I mean, it's heavy duty, and so it's heavy. You know what I mean? We still have the large pocket with Taylor and logo embroidered on it and some nice um, accessory pockets in here. A little fun fact, they, Taylor has a collapsible plastic uh, stand that when closed fits perfectly into this little pocket. So. so there you go. As far as the cases go, I think this is a clear winner. It's a really robust case. Um, the Martin case is not something that you know, is bad, but this is, this is on par with like really nice mono cases and stuff. So it's a good, good bag. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any trouble putting my higher end tailors in one of those. So now let's turn back to the guitars. Forget the accessories, maybe buy a hard shell case with either of these. Which one are you going to go with? So I like the sound of both of these. These have kind of a dry sound, which is what you would expect with mahogany or with walnut, which is very similar to mahogany with a little bit more on the high end treble side of it. Kind of like if mahogany and maple got together, this would be the kid that came along with it. Um, if you like natural wood and you like, um, you know, kind of to see the grain, then this is definitely for you. Um, and I really like the burst top on this with that uh, kind of tiger stripe pick guard. Overall, I, I really like this, and I think the pickup, Taylor's proprietary ES2, is, in my opinion, probably a better pickup than the default Fishman that comes with this, although the enhanced uh, knob does add a lot more kind of warmth to the mix on the Martin. The Martin, I really dig. I, I've liked the Whiskey Sunset on this model for a long time, um, and I don't know if I were to go with one, if I would go with the kind of penguin... Uh, black smoke and white, which is its own cool aesthetic or not. So I would have a difficult time choosing between these. I think they both definitely will have their fans and their pluses and minuses. Um, I will say I prefer, I think, the open gear tuners on this one compared to the Taylor one. I don't know if it'd work with Taylor's overall aesthetic, but I tend to like on kind of a vintage in, you know, inspired guitar, this open gear look. So all in all, I'm torn. Um, and I don't know which one I would take home. I mentioned, I will say this, I mentioned the fretwork on the Taylor being impeccable. There's binding on the neck, so you don't see the tangs on the Martin, but the fretwork, again, it's just, it's just perfect. I mean, for $2,000, I know a lot of you guys are going, well, it should be for that much money. But if you've been around guitars for a considerable period of time, you'll know, one, that hasn't always been the case, and two, there are still guitars that are more expensive than either of these that would not have perfect fretwork, uh, might have tooling marks on it, you know, things like that, um, for more money. So I think both of these manufacturers are knocking it out of the park. I'd like to hear from you. Which one would you take with your money? $2,000, you're going to the store. Which one's going home with you? Let us know in the comments below. Um, and any other opinions you have about the rest of this video? Uh, as for me, I, I really don't know. I'd probably take the Martin. I don't know. Maybe I'll take the Taylor. Take them both. So if you're new to our channel, we're all about guitar reviews and helping you find the right guitar to suit your needs. So make sure that you uh, subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos, and keep coming back for more, and we'll see you next time.